But one of the most intriguing world championship matches of all time was between Vera Menchik and Sonia Groff. And this is one that really could be made into a movie. And I know, Jen, this is one of your favorite topics to talk about. Well, absolutely, because the thing about chess, and particularly this uh, Women's World Championship in 1939, is the way that chess intersects with his, the history of the world. And no more time is that statement more apt than the 1939 Olympiad held in Buenos Aires in Argentina. And this was uh, both an Olympiad for the Open and also a Women's World Championship. But it wasn't a match, it was more like an Open tournament and the best woman would win. So there was Vera Menchik, who was already a seven-time Women's World Champion. So she was coming in as a heavy favorite. Um, they set sail from Europe in July of 1939, having no idea, of course, that they would not be coming back, some of them. And the war was about to break out in Europe. That's right. So the tournament began in August in Buenos Aires. And um, actually, in the case of Sonia Graf, who um, was living in Germany at the time, um, she was told by Goebbels, the minister of Nazi propaganda, that she could not play for Germany because she was so vocal against the Nazi regime. Ooh. So she got stripped of her flag and had to play under the flag of liberty. She ended up getting second in the tournament, um, second to Vera Minchik, who just got 18 out of 20 points, completely crushed the field. Wow. And uh, she was winning in her individual game against Vera, so she was ever so close to becoming the women's world champion. And I always think of that as a bit sad because Sonia was such um, an incredible figure when it comes to her character. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she was an author, uh, bon vivant, one of the people who really showed how chess could leave you this life of adventure. Right. Um, but she didn't win the championship. Vera Menchik did. The very sad thing about Vera Menchik, she did go back to Europe, unlike Sonia Graf, unlike Nydorf, and she died in the London Blitz right. in 1944. One of the bombings. Yeah. Exactly. But Sonia knew that, you know, after Goebbels said that about her, it was pretty clear that she, yeah, she wasn't going anywhere. No, no, no. <laughs> she wasn't going to survive. So she stayed in Argentina, ended up immigrating to the United States and actually won a couple of U.S. women's championships. Right. Um, another player who also ended up staying in Argentina, who's very well known to our audience, is, is Mikhail Nydorf. Absolutely. Well, in fact, the entire Polish team uh, said, we're not going to go back to Poland. And they all stayed, as did many, many other European players saying, look, you know, the outbreak of war in Europe, it's just not safe. And they were a lot of mostly Jewish. They were just going to get killed. They... No question about it. And if you stop and think about it, how the heck are you supposed to get back to Europe anyway? I mean, it's not like you're just going to catch an international jet flight. You're going to take a ship. And how do you know the ship's not going to get blown up? All the bombings that were going on. Absolutely. And the relevance of that also to the world championships, because you have Alakine who's sitting there waiting for a challenger, but nothing can be done. Absolutely, you can't play. There's war going on. Sure. And so he sits and he sits and he's depressed and he's waiting around for a challenger all those years while the war is going on. Exactly. And at the very end, when the war finally stops, he gets a bid that says he's gonna be, he can finally play again, and then he dies in his hotel room. Exactly. And so the war had such an impact on chess and the history of the World Chess Championships. And not just the men's, as you mentioned with Alakine, but also the ladies. So in the case of the, we know what they did to solve the World Championship. Now we have a vacant title. What did they do in the case of the ladies? It wasn't always match play, it was tournament play. So did right. they just continue the tournament play? Well, the next um, uh, World Cha Women's World Championship, if I recall Russia. correctly, was Bikova and uh, Rudenko. Those Who's were the Soviet at the time now. Yes, but um, with, with Vera Menchik dying in 1944, I mean, what a tremendous loss for the chess world. You know, Vera Menchik was way ahead of her time. She was the first woman that would play against the top men of her day. Yeah. And in fact, there was famously a Vera Menchik club. That's right. Which was supposed to be for men who um, lost, lost to her. her. And there was a very elite group of names in that club, wasn't there? Exactly. It wasn't right. a club that you wanted to join, but they almost took a, it seemed like there was a lot of camaraderie. Like she, yeah. was, she was a really nice person. And it's just devastating to see about, um, we really, could have had even more from these players, you know, more stories, more games. Sure. And I think that's what's so amazing about chess history, how it's an art that we can look at the games and it also intersects with history itself. Right. And for children, especially, that can, um, you know, teach you about these wars.
World War II had a massive impact in the chess world, but particularly in women's chess, um, killing this uh, grand figure of chess who was the first woman to compete on the equal terms with men, um, way ahead of her time, right. um, just really terribly the sad. Judith, really the Judith Polgar of the world and that exact moment. Also, of course, you've mentioned the loss of Alexander Alekhine, but there were many grandmasters that simply died by hunger or disease, starvation. I mean, these two world wars devastated Europe and devastated the chess world. Indeed, and it led to a rethink of how the world championships would be run from that moment on, the advent of FIDE taking over as an international body and the age really of the private world championships ended right there with the war. Closed so, out. A very important point in chess history.